You, you hear me all right? Okay. Um, yeah, so um, it's a, a really great pleasure to be here and um, you know, uh, have the opportunity to uh, talk, about, talk about recent work. Um, and um, also to you know, talk about Boris. Uh, let me, good that he's not here. Um, so yeah, so let me start with telling you about what I discovered last week. Um, I have a friend who asked me, you know, where, where are you going? And I said, you know, going to Boris's birthday. She, you know, said Boris's birthday. She laughed at me and said that uh, there's no way, you, you're kidding. There cannot be a person who is named Boris. Boris is a, everyone knows, Boris is the name of a f fictional character, uh, an animal from a book. Uh, and uh, I, I mean, I didn't believe her first because she's you know, a, little, a little strange, but, <laughs> but then I, uh, I looked it up and indeed, uh, and indeed uh, um, strange as, as she is, uh, th there, is a, there is a book that everyone knows uh, and except me, uh, which you know, which is this one, and in this book uh, uh, there is a character named Boris, um, and uh, this is an owl, and uh, the uh, owl that when I saw it I thought you know it looks strikingly familiar uh, in in uh, in some ways, um, and um, when I uh, looked closer, it turned out that, you know, even more familiar than I thought because, uh, because this is a, um, well, it's a nocturnal bird, a uh, nocturnal bird uh, which uh, is an uh, antiquarian bookseller in a book and it gives instructions to, you know, to bugs and to, to, uh, to butterflies, where are the butterflies? Uh, yeah, the butterflies, and it got got assistance, a lizard, and Professor Leap, um, a frog, and um, yeah. So and the whole the whole setting looks very familiar. Uh, so uh, uh, you know, looking cl closer and closer, I I, I I I got convinced that there is indeed you know something here about Boris. Uh, and you know, finally, I looked at the publication date, and I discovered that publication date uh, also agrees. You know, published on the same year as Boris's first paper, and uh, so, <laughs> and and so, so that that means that now we um, know Boris's true nature, and uh, that's that's the that's my big discovery. I wanted to share with you. Um, Yeah, and so now, you know, let me talk about less important things. Um, so, yeah, so, so, so the story today is, is about um, how to use graphene to create um, various interesting charge neutral modes and then, you know, excite them and detect them uh, using non-local non -local measurements. And there will be two parts to the story. Part one is about valley currents. So valley currents is, um, is uh, something that arises when you have a band structure with, with several, uh, several valleys, like here in graphene or here in silicon or in, in, uh, um, in dihydrocadenides. Uh, if you have valleys, you can uh, imagine a situation that uh, you, carriers in the valleys are, are induced to move in the opposite directions, and then, uh, then there is a current, but it doesn't transport charge, it transmit, transmits a, a valley index. So it's like spin current in materials with spin orbit. Uh, charge neutral, but it, 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 you know, it's a real, a real current of something, some quantum numbers. And uh, you, if, you, if you have control over it, you can uh, use it to, you know, to do interesting things and maybe potentially useful things. Um, and so that's, that's uh, the uh, appealing, appealing thing here. Another appealing thing here is that uh, in, uh, in, in graphene and materials of that family, um, you can 
as we'll discuss shortly, you, you, you can induce Berry's curvature. And if you have Berry's curvature, you can control this current um, by uh, a valley hall effect, which arises without m magnetic field yeah. just because there is Berry's curvature, you get the whole effect uh, in, in this carrier. So, something that you don't get in silicon, for example, because in silicon there is no Berry's curvature in the band structure, and, and, and so, uh, so there is no option to create valley currents like this. So if you, so this is an idea in one slide. If you have two valleys uh, that, um, that um, uh, have Berry's curvature, then uh, you know, red means positive curvature, blue negative curvature. If you, are, if you have your Fermi level here somewhere, then, uh, then um, positive curvature means that you will have, if you apply electric field, carriers will move in a skewed way uh, to the right, and you know, negative curvature means they will move in a skewed way to the left. And if you have both valleys and you apply the electric field, then as you can see, there will be transverse to the field motion uh, to one direction, one valley, the other direction, the other valley, that uh, charge, uh, charge currents will cancel and, and valley currents will double, so there will be a valley current uh, transverse to electric field, and that's, that's valley hole current. And if you, if you, if you write it, uh, just write what I said, then it gives a relation between uh, valley current and transverse electric field and proportionality constant called valley hole conductivity. And uh, now if you do this using equations of motion, then what you, you know, what you get is, is quite interesting. You, in addition to the, uh, to the ordinary quasi-particle dynamics that we write uh, deriving velocity as a, uh, as a um, uh, group velocity from dispersion relation and uh, writing Lorentz force equation for momentum, uh, you get an extra term which is called anomalous velocity that, uh, that uh, is proportional to Berry's curvature. And as you can see, there is a striking similarity, uh, striking symmetry that uh, it, it creates uh, to the equations of motion playing the same role in momentum space as magnetic field plays in position space. And so with Berry's curvature, things become uh, looking very nice and, and, and symmetric. And so that, that's, that's, that's another uh, reason this, this is appealing. Um, so, okay, so now going on to, to discuss how we create Berry's curvature in graphene, um, I want to mention co collaborators, students from MIT and collaborators uh, in UK and uh, on, on, the, on the last part, collaborator is Grisha, Grisha Falkovich from uh, Weizmann Institute. Um, so, uh, so to create Berry's curvature, we need to uh, we need topological bands, and topological bands is something which is familiar in to topological materials, materials uh, that uh, that have bands that have uh, Ber Berry's connection, and the curl of that is Berry's curvature, and if Berry's curvature flux threading the surface is a non-zero integer called Chern number, then it's a topologically non-trivial band, and then these materials will support topologically protected states. Uh, and graphene, pristine graphene is not, not like that, but it turns out that you can combine graphene with other two-dimensional materials and build um, topological materials. And so that's what we'll be trying to do. The reason this is interesting is that uh, graphene has excellent transport properties, and so you can, uh, you can benefit from that if you um, add topological properties on top. Uh, then you can get a material which is you know, excellent in uh, m many different ways, and that, that, will be, uh, in, uh, that will be quite interesting. Um, so, yeah, so let's go on. So, oh, sorry, let me stand here. Right. So, uh, so just a quick reminder what you know, Berry's curvature is. If I have, if I have block states uh, in, you know, in some band, uh, I can con consider Berry's connection that you know, st standard vehicle when in introduced when deriving, de deriving Berry's phase and uh, derive, take a curl of that, that will be Berry's, Berry's curvature. And uh, I, want, I want this quantity to be non-zero. In, in graphene, um, we, we do have Berry's phase. We know that if we take Berry's connection, uh, it defines the vector potential in the graphene brilliant zone, uh, which has non-zero uh, circulation about every direct point. Uh, and so there is, there is Berry's phase. However, it, it's curlless. It has zero curl, and so there is no Berry's curvature. Uh, and uh, that's, that's a problem, but it can be, 
um, if we fix it, then we'll be able to benefit um, in, 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 in several ways. So, right, so, so in order to fix it, uh, what we want to do is to open, to open a gap in graphene spectrum. And if we do that, uh, then, uh, then uh, near each um, Dirac point with gap opened up, there will be a pocket. There will be a pocket of Berry's curvature, and, um, and um, th th then we'll have this zero magnetic field in, you know, in the absence of real magnetic field in the system with, in which there is time reversal symmetry. So, so this is, I think, this is very familiar uh, in mm, from other systems, for example, from the. Um, from the anomalous Hall effect that people uh, studied uh, for a long time in magnetic materials. Uh, the difference here, however, is that, is that uh, here Berry's curvature arises without breaking time reversal symmetry. In magnetic materials, due to spin orbit uh, with, magnetic field, uh, with time reversal symmetry broken by, by magnetic polarization, uh, you, you don't have time reversal symmetry constraint. Here, here you do. Because of that, Berry's curvature is non-zero, but is such that it cancels uh, contributions in valley k and valley k prime uh, are positive, uh, are opposite, and so they cancel each other. Uh, okay, and um, so if you take a full graphene band and compute Chern invariant because of this, uh, because of this time reversal constraint, it will be zero. However, if we, as we'll see, we can define valley uh, mini bands, uh, and and in the, in this case, for each valley, there will be a, you know non-zero Chern invariant for a valley mini band. And so that's what we, we want to do. Uh, pr practically, this is done as follows. We, we can take graphene and pair it up with uh, another atomically thin material, uh, boron nitride. And uh, if you put one on top of the other, they, um, they, um, um, they, are, they are nearly lattice match. So they, they form a structure which is, uh, which is nearly in register. Uh, there is a slight incommensurability, so there is a long period modulation. And this long period modulation uh, takes slightly different forms depending on the twist angle. If, if, if there is a non-zero twist angle, uh, then it's a roughly sinusoidal modulation corresponding to some kind of moiré structure that I'll uh, see in the next slide. If, if, it's a, if it's an axis aligned arrangement, then, then you get commensurate, commensurate domains and, and domain walls in, in, in between. Um, and so in these two, Uh, so, so you have two different states controlled by the twist angle, and um, I should change my position. Yeah. So, so you get uh, you get more type structure at non-zero twist angle and uh, commensurate structure at zero twist angle, and uh, if we if we now compute mini bands and focus on you know focus on one valley, uh, we will discover the following. Uh, you can construct uh, can construct uh, the mini band theory uh, very easily, and there've been you know uh, different people uh, peop people working on it, including our chairman uh, and uh, and and many others. So you can you can using the fact that uh, long period modulation is m much longer wavelength than lattice constant, you can uh, you can benefit by going to continuum theory and. And working near the vicinity of each Dirac point, uh, uh, considering continuum Dirac uh, model uh, in in the presence of uh, long period modulation, and then uh, you know uh, taking taking account of what kind of modulation you create in each case, more rare or commensurate, uh, you can determine the psi, the value and the relative sign of these coefficients, and if you do all that and calculate Berry's curvature. Uh, in the incommensurate case, you get you get Berry's curvature, uh, which uh, is sign changing in the mini brilliant zone. Uh, so this is a pocket of Berry's curvature direct point, and these are opposite sign pockets in, in at the corners of mini brilliant zone. Uh, and in the commensurate case, Berry's curvature is not in the incommensurate case. It's not changing sign. So if you uh, integrate Berry's curvature in the first case, you get zero. In this case, you get one. So this is topologically non-trivial band, and so. Uh, so uh, not, not very important for what I'm going to say next, but it's, it's interesting to mention that, that in this case we have, uh, we have two types of structures with, uh, with uh, non-topological and topological bands, and uh, the, 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 there is a t transition which is tunable, uh, tunable by, by the twist angle. 
Um, and so now we, you know, now we have that, and now in, near each near each Dirac point, we have a pocket, uh, we have a pocket of various curvature, and we can now play our our game of inducing valley currents, uh, and you know, we have valley hole coefficient. We can uh, now we can relate that to Berry's curvature, and so it's all all under control. Um, uh, so how how we excite currents and detect them? Uh, the, the, so here is the idea. What what you want? What you want to do is to you know uh, make sure that uh, your charge neutral currents don't inter interfere with charge currents, and the easiest way to do it is to use non-local geometry. Uh, imagine a long bar, much longer than much longer than this one, and um, and uh, much longer than this one. And then uh, we have a pair of contacts here where we apply charge current, and then another pair of contacts at the remote location where we uh, me measure voltage. If, if my system has valley hole conductivity, uh, charge, uh, charge current will induce transverse valley current, which will be charge neutral, because charge neutral, it can propagate uh, without any charge buildup or electric field buildup uh, as long as intervalley relaxation allows it to go, and intervalley relaxation is quite slow in graphene, so you can uh, you can you can put this many many microns away, uh, and uh, then then here there will be no absolutely no uh, charge currents, uh, but there will be valley currents, and then these valley currents by by the reverse valley hole effect uh, at this pair of contacts will produce a voltage by which you read out uh, read out uh, the presence of the, of the valley currents. So that's that's the idea, and uh, you can make a loose analogy with with um, with the radio, we have charge circuit by, by which you excite charge neutral photons, and these charge neutral photons on the other end uh, are detected by charge circuit. And so, so that's, that's the idea of the experiment. And experiment has been done two years ago, uh, Manchester, uh, geometry uh, very similar to what I showed. So it's a long bar with, which is about 15 microns long in this case with, with many pairs of contacts. And what you, you can use one pair of contact to to apply current and another pair of contacts to detect voltage. And uh, what you observe is a, non a signal that as a function of carrier density, which you can tune by uh, ch changing voltage in a backgate, uh, ch uh, sh shows, uh, shows th these peaks. The, the red, red curve is the non-local voltage. Uh, it shows peaks which are aligned with peaks in, in, in resistivity, uh, which, appear fr fr which appear at the densities where you know, Berry, uh, Berry phase, um, Berry curvature pockets uh, are situated. And uh, so, so from that, we see that non-local response only arises where, at, at, the, at, at the points where our Fermi level is near, it lines up with, with, the, with Berry's curvature. And uh, the geometry is such that uh, if you estimate the, you know, effect of stray ohmic currents, the, 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 that is very small. There are always some currents that uh, that uh, are transmitted by current lines that move very, very far away uh, from the nominal pathway, uh, but their, their contribution to voltage is small. It's this exponential, you know, well known to uh, people in, in transport. And uh, so the, the dist uh, it, it's exponential of pi times distance over width uh, ratio, and in, in this case, you know, distance over width ratio is about five at least, and so the times pi makes an exponential. Uh, negative power makes it a really small number, so so it can be excluded, um, and so we, f because of this, because of you know modeling that we did and you know various other other reasons, maybe, yeah, not much time to go into it. Uh, we, we are pretty pretty certain that we uh, we are seeing here non-local response, a long-range response due to uh, due to the effect that uh, that I described. Uh, one can also, by measuring at the different pairs of contacts, one can also de determine length uh, over which uh, you know, it, de it decays, and the length, length in this case, characteristic length in this case is about a micron, uh, which in this device coincides with, it with its width, so that, that would be consistent with valley, valley scattering occurring when, whenever carriers hit, uh, hit the boundary. Um, and, uh, yeah. So that's, uh, and I mean, th there is a checklist of what, what you expect uh, for valley currents and what you don't expect, and we went all, all over it, and I'll be happy to, you know, to discuss. 
uh, and and it all uh, all agrees. You, you expect from for valley current, you, you expect to see a scaling of valley hole response, which is which goes as cube of resistivity, and so that's that's uh, that's a ch check on that, and um, and, and there, there is a reasonably good agreement, um, and uh, you know a few other things. So so the conclusion here is that. Uh, we, we have a way to induce charge neutral uh, currents and detect them by, by non-local response. And so this is a bonus, uh, bonus uh, picture. Uh, a top gate which, which is added on top of this device can be used to shut, um, shut this uh, non-local signal uh, on and off. Uh, and, uh, and the sensitivity to the top, top gate voltage is pretty, pretty strong and you can shut it down fully by applying a very strong, a very weak uh, potential on, on that top, top gate, right? And so, so this is a little bit like, for, you know, for people who, uh, who, are, uh, who know Spintronics, it's a little bit like uh, the uh, propo data, data dust proposal of a spin transistor where you put, put top gate, uh, put a gate to control spin orbit interaction and you know, spin rotation. And uh, so, so this is the same thing, essentially, uh, from symmetry point of view, it's the same thing but for valley currents, except that it, th th this thing works much better in, 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 in the case of data dust proposal. Uh, I think the, um, the swing was never, in the experiments, the best experiments that, uh, that, uh, that, that, that are published, which, which are these, the swing was never more than you know, 50%, and here it's at, at least a factor of 100. Uh, so, um, Everything works very well on graphene. Well, I mean, the uh, uh, valley quantum number is more decoupled from everything. I mean, there is no, there's no analog of Zeeman interaction, no analog of you know, spin orbit interaction, no. So, so, so there, I mean, there are weak effects that a disorder would produce into valley scattering. That's the only thing. So if, you, if your system is very clean, then you are, you are, you are safe. And it appears that, that it is very clean. So this, I mean, just maybe for curiosity, it's been repeated in other systems. For example, in graphene bilayer, you can open a totally different system, no, no boron nitrate substrate. In graphene bilayer, you can open a gap by applying transverse electric field and then at that uh, bilayer Dirac point, you, you also get Berry's curvature and then you know, similar effect. And in graphene bilayer, you see an even better non-local response going over you know, twice as long or three times as long as, as here. Um, yeah. Right, so, oh, okay. So, uh, yeah, so, uh, so summary for this part is that we have uh, we have uh, a system where we can produce valley currents, charge neutral currents, and uh, they, uh, because they can, because being charge neutral, they can mediate non-local non electrical response. Uh, we can use valley hole effect to excite them and detect them. Um, and, um, and in this case, we use graphene super lattices as, as, as a platform by creating block curvature in, in mini bands. Uh, and it's, you know, it's an interesting system because uh, th that particular system is interesting because we have topological and non-topological bands. So if you manage, if you manage to find, to, to create a system where because of unhomogeneity or something else, the twist angle will, will be changing, uh, then uh, you, 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 you will have a system with, uh, with domains where, you know, where bands are topological and neighboring domains non-topological. And then at the boundaries of between these domains, they'll be topologically um, induced uh, edge states, and so that's that's maybe uh, the, the way the way to go from here. Okay, so let me. Yeah, it's roughly yeah, right. So let me now switch to a different kind of neutral node. Uh, so uh, so our uh, electron viscosity, and maybe st start with this discussion uh, of of um, hydrodynamics and in. in in electron systems, and when when is it relevant, and uh, what do we 
how, how do we uh, test it. Uh, you know, subject to a long story, but even if, if, if I first think about uh, systems other than electron systems in everyday life, we, we know very well that hydrodynamics is, uh, is, is really uh, very, very relevant and everything around us, if you, especially if you go to the, to the beach, everything, everything there, the boats, the waves, the wind, the sand, everything is controlled, uh, controlled by, uh, by, by hydrodynamics, so this question doesn't even uh, doesn't even uh, arise at this point. Uh, uh, but if you really want to think about it, then, uh, then the uh, hydrodynamics emerges when, when you have a system like uh, a fluid or a gas where, uh, where collisions between molecules or atoms happen very quickly and, uh, and um, they are momentum conserving and energy conserving, so you get uh, you get conservation laws of energy momentum, which are not, uh, you know, particle specific. Uh, momentum is very quickly an energy, are very quickly detached uh, from 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 individual particles and become collective variables, and then they have their own life as collective variables, and that life is is described by by hydrodynamics. Uh, and um, if you put it in mathematical form, you you have to introduce uh, the, uh, co quantities that control it. Uh, viscosities and thermal conductivity and ba basically everything, uh, everything you see in this picture uh, uh, can be can be described in principle can be described if you know these three 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 quantities, right? Uh, so um, so what what about uh, what about electron systems? So in, in electrons in electron systems, uh, you know we we do have electron electron collisions which are I make many cases. Uh, have a very fast rate. However, electrons also uh, exchange energy and momentum with lattice. So they, they, they scatter on disorder and, uh, and also they couple to phonons and th that provides mechanisms for energy and momentum relaxation. And so one might, uh, one might think that hydrodynamics maybe is not so, uh, so relevant in this case. Uh, however, uh, there, are, uh, there are cases where a hydrodynamical treatment uh, is, is, is justified and one, so one such case, I think, was described, I mean, historically, not the first one, but the one I like most, uh, was described by, uh, by Anton Andreev and collaborators uh, in, in, in uh, high mobility two-dimensional systems where, uh, where the disorder is long wavelength, uh, has, has correlation length, which is m much longer than, than elastic mean free, uh, sorry, than two particle, uh, than the mean free path due to two particle collisions. Uh, right, so this this condition, uh, then uh, th then uh, then you have um, uh, hydrodynamical picture established on, on length scales much much smaller than the disorder correlation length scale, and then in this case, right, in this case, uh, they um, uh, they they predict that uh, transport will be controlled by hydrodynamics that should be applied at the intermediate time scales between, uh, between the collision length scale, uh, sorry, intermediate length scales between the collision length scale and the correlation, disorder correlation length scale, and, um, and uh, then the transport coefficients like resistivity and various other coefficients will be directly expressed through, uh, through thermal conductivity and viscosities. And so, so, so this is a situation when, when the viscous gas flows over over some metric, over some curved, curved space with you know, some analog of curvature provided by uh, slowly varying potential. And then in, in this case, uh, the, uh, the usual transport picture, drew the like transport picture, should be replaced by a hydrodynamical, uh, by a hydrodynamical picture. Uh, and, uh, and of course, th then there is, there is another case when uh, you simply don't have any disorder, and that that's, that's has a, that has a much longer history. It's been discussed by uh, by by people a long time ago, starting from Gurji, you know, 1968. Uh, so so in this case, if you if you have a system with essentially no disorder, and that's that's what graphene will be like, uh, we um, uh, we have two regimes. We have Knudsen regime when your, you know, let's say, width of your channel is much smaller than mean free path, and we have, uh, we have something like Poiseuille regime or Poiseuille-Gurge regime, as it's called, when, 
when it's uh, wider than mean free, mean free path. Uh, and, um, and, and then, uh, then in this case, uh, viscosity is, viscosity controls transport and, uh, and, and uh, one can show that momentum relaxation, uh, momentum relaxation, because it only occurs at the boundaries, M momentum diffuses, momentum imparted on the system by electric field has to diffuse out to the boundary to, uh, to actually dissipate. Uh, the, uh, the momentum relaxation time essentially becomes momentum diffusion time with viscosity playing the role of momentum diffusion coefficient. And uh, so in this case, as, uh, as, as Gurdjieff predicted, uh, the momentum relaxation will, uh, will slow down as a function of, uh, as a function of um, system width and uh, as a function of temperature because temperature will increase the collision rate. Collision rate will make viscosity coefficient go down and that will make diffusion time uh, go up. And so momentum relaxation will decrease. And so the striking manifestation of this regime is that uh, when we increase temperature, and uh, it can be done, for example, by, by applying higher current, uh, resistivity, resistivity should go down because momentum relaxation time will go down. And uh, that, that's the Gourgeois effect that has been tested in ballistic wires by Mullen company collaborators. Uh, so, so it's a nonlinear non IV, and there is this drop in, in, in resistivity at when, current is, uh, when current is high enough, and that, that's, that's, that, that's the signature of, of uh, viscosity. So in, in, in graphene, um, we um, have, um, I mean, we also have a strongly interacting uh, system uh, and interactions even become you know very very strong near Dirac point because they become unscreened and um, and uh, because there is low density of states and and because of various other reasons so so in graphene near Dirac point is in in many ways an ideal place to look for electron viscosity uh, collision collisions are very fast interaction is, interaction is very strong plus graphene is a very clean system so uh, so disorder will not play uh, will not play um, that much role, uh, and so th this has been realized by, you know, by by many people, and you know there is a detailed theory that has been worked out of what you know what, what viscosity in graphene is, and uh, and even you know pr comparison of viscosity and entropy uh, uh, ratio was shown by you know, Marcus Miller uh, was and collaborators shown to be uh, very close to the uh, limit. Um, to, to the limit that was conjectured, conjectured by uh, high energy uh, community uh, as a fundamental limit for you know for that ratio, uh, and so, so so because of that you know and other other reasons, uh, graphene uh, and viscosity in graphene is uh, is 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 interesting. Uh, qu question is how do we measure it or how, how we even prove that it's it's a viscous regime? So there have been several proposals. And um, so one, one is in, in that same uh, paper by Marcus, uh, basically say, I mean, this picture, but if I reinterpret it, uh, what you should do is you should look at the scaling, because resistivity will scale inversely with width of your channel. And, and in the, in the Poiseuille-Gourge uh, regime, the resistivity will scale inversely with the square of the width. So if you measure scaling, if you measure scaling, uh, then you will be able to uh, see that it's viscous versus omic. Uh, but for that, you need to compare, you know, several different samples uh, of different widths, and that, that may not be very convenient. Uh, there was another proposal, um, uh, uh, used carbina geometry with time-varying time uh, flux applied through it, uh, and so that, you know, it's a, also, also a possible measurement, but, you know, hard to do because time-varying measurements, high frequency are, 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 are difficult. So, 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 you know, the challenge from my point of view is to try to do it on a single device, and try to do it without time varying you know, signals and in a linear response regime, so that we, we are not su subject to heating. And uh, so that's that's the, the, the that's the challenge, and uh, that, that's the, the, the this is the solution. So the idea, uh, the idea is that we will consider exactly the same geometry, non-local non geometry, current current applied from source to drain, uh, like uh, li like here, uh, and uh, and then in the case when the flow is viscous. Uh, there will be a drag of the current flowing uh, along the straight path on uh, on carriers on the sides, and uh, and um, it will uh, launch vorticity on the sides of that flow, and and vorticity means that there will be a backflow over here. And the backflow means uh, means that there will be an opposite sign 
charge buildup uh, across uh, across the boundary of the strip on the sides on the sides of uh, you know so line from source to drain, uh, and so so from this picture you predict that the non-local uh, non-local voltage measured somewhere here will be negative rather than positive as you expect in the ohmic case, and if you do if you do calculation you find that this is indeed true. So th this is uh, so what you see here are streamlines. These are these white uh, white uh, curves, and uh, the color is potential. Uh, blue means negative, and red means positive, or um, maybe the other way around. But I mean, w what you see here is that is that uh, th th there is an opposite sign potential on the sides as compared to potential on the drain, and that that's that's the signature. The mechanism here uh, mechanism here is very similar to. Uh, what you what you get in in, in in the situation which is more familiar to you know some people uh, Coulomb drag if you have a Coulomb drag geometry when you have two layers an active layer and a passive layer you apply uh, you apply current through active layer uh, then uh, there is interlayer momentum scattering and interlayer momentum scattering imparts momentum on carriers in the second layer uh, but carriers in the second layer electrically decoupled so they will uh, they will uh, you know, with the same momentum as in the first layer, uh, they will uh, induce voltage, which is op of opposite sign uh, to the voltage by which you induce current in, in the active layer. So, uh, yeah, so, so this is essentially a distributed version of that Cou Coulomb drag uh, geometry. And if you compare it to the ohmic regime, the ohmic regime, uh, current is always along, along the gradient of the potential, so you get, uh, you know, P potential is uh, of the sign that you expect everywhere uh, near the source and drain and away from it. And um, now if you, if you do modeling, introduce viscosity and write down, uh, write down trade dynamical equations with, uh, with, with, with viscosities and boundary conditions, no time to talk about that. Uh, ask me if you like. Uh, and, then, uh, and then solve it. Convenient way to solve it is to, to introduce flow function of which velocity is, is, is a curl, then you solve in, in, in compressibility condition, uh, and you're left with a biharmonic equation that you have to solve with you know, boundary conditions. And after you do that, you get, you get an expression for voltage as a function of distance uh, that looks like the Fourier transform of some function. Now, notice that this function is positive, so there is no minus sign, no obvious minus sign in front of you. However, if you, uh, if you study what this function looks like, it looks like two peaks in k-space. And so if you have two peaks in k-space uh, with zero in the middle, it's very easy to do Fourier transform on your head. And then you see that there must be, must be a wide range where Fourier transform is negative. Uh, and and that's, so that's indeed what, uh, what it is. Uh, you get, uh, so, so this is what, uh, what voltage as function of distance looks like, uh, looks like uh, in the model I described, also in a model where you add ohmic resistance on top. So, so the red curve is a pure viscous regime, the blue, and then going up means adding uh, higher and higher resistivity. And so you see that non-local response is fully negative in the viscous regime, and then, uh, and then uh, changes sign in, in the case of when there is ohmic response, uh, also it changes sign and becomes positive far away. And then this point where it changes sign it depends on the ratio of the resistivity and viscosity, and if, 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 if it's detected, you can get a numerical value for viscosity if you know resistivity, which you usually do, um, from, uh, from that type of, type of measurement. Uh, lastly, uh, there is an experiment that you know, ap appeared simultaneously with that work and was just uh, communicated to us uh, a few weeks ago in, in Manchester where people, uh, people do see where measurements do show a negative non-local response in, you know, in, in a geometry similar to that, to that I described. Uh, this is not the only lab where uh, negative non-local response is being seen. I think there are similar data in Columbia and also at, at Harvard uh, uh, and perhaps other places. Um, yeah, so summary is that um, you can, I mean, you can see uh, you can see viscosity, a signature of viscosity uh, arising because, because of vorticity generated in the viscous flow, and vorticity creates backflow, and you know, that leads to negative, negative non-local voltage. 
uh, and so that, that gives a direct, a direct way to detect viscous regime and to measure viscosity. And, um, and then, you know, thinking about experiments, uh, experiments, of course, we, uh, we should be aware of other neutral modes because uh, viscosity is about momentum transfer and momentum, momentum is a neutral mode, but it's not the only neutral mode. And there are others, the one most important is, is, is entropy or thermal mode and should be accounted for to, to describe experiments. Um, also controlled, maybe controlled by cooling. And, um, but in principle, I think this provides a way to measure, measure viscosity, you know, with qualification that one needs to take thermal effects into account. Uh, what I think is not known how to do is how to measure second viscosity. And uh, it's interesting because there are predictions by, you know, say, string theory people that due to conformal theory viscosity, uh, due to conformal symmetry viscosity is supposed to vanish. Uh, second viscosity is supposed to vanish. So that would be interesting to see whether it comes out like that on experiments. Uh, thank you very much.